This is the worst narcissist of all, even grander than the grandiose. This is the narcissist that Jesus warned us of when he said, beware of wolves in sheep's clothing, because this is the narcissist that sneaks in undetected, flies under the radar, and infects your life in ways that you couldn't even imagine. Well, hey, my friend, welcome back to another edition of the Building Faith Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Reese, and it is my mission, as always, to provide you with biblical solutions to life's tough challenges. So if you are being blessed by our time together, would you do me a favor? Go ahead and hit that subscribe and notification button so you don't miss a thing. When we think of the granddaddy of all narcissists, we usually think of the highly abusive malignant narcissist. But it doesn't take a discerning eye to see this narcissist from a mile away. The narcissist I'm talking about today flies under the radar and even comes across to many as sweet and caring and easygoing and very nice. But beneath that erroneous exterior, you are dealing with a self-centered, egotistical, self-righteous, entitled brat. Now you may be saying to me, Chris, well, that sounds a lot like the covert narcissist. And you'd be right. There's a tiny element that you're missing. You see, this isn't just the covert narcissist. This is the Christian covert narcissist. This narcissist that calls themselves a Christ follower knows all the right words to say. They've learned the lingo. Maybe they even learned it from you, but they are anything but true followers of Christ. In fact, many of them are wolves in sheep's clothing. So today I want to give you some insight into their behavior and help you to be able to follow the biblical mandate found in Proverbs 4:23. above all else, guard your heart for it is the wellspring of life. So let's talk about eight contradicting characteristics of the Christian covert narcissist. That was a tongue twister. Contradiction number one, sweet on the outside, shallow on the inside. Two opposing flavors may work well for candy bars, but not for healthy relationships. The Christian covert narcissist comes across like he or she cares so much, but the truth is it's just a facade and it's an overly exaggerated one at that because they have to sell you on these features because they know that if you lift up the hood, you're going to see there's no depth and a few minutes of genuine conversation, and you're gonna see that you can't swim in those shallow waters. But if you too are the type to hang out on the shoreline, you may not spot this person easily. Contradicting characteristic number two, they use vulnerability to manipulate. Have you ever had compassion for someone only to later feel bamboozled? And you can't quite put your finger on it, but something about your care for them made you feel uneasy. You know, maybe they cried the financial blues to you only to find out that they really didn't need the money. Or maybe they convinced you to do something for them that you later learned they could have and should have done for themselves. The covert Christian narcissist loves to play the victim in need. Contradiction number three, nice, but not kind. Nice, by definition, means pleasant and agreeable, and these are two characteristics that can easily be faked. But nice is shallow and superficial, while kind is self-sacrificing. And the Christian covert narcissist is not genuine, and that's why they erect this nice image, because they care more about how they appear than how they really are. Contradiction number four, they quote scripture, but they're biblically illiterate. Christian covert narcissists know enough scripture to be dangerous. And if they lie and they twist their words and yours, why wouldn't they do it to God's word? Be sure that you know God's truth for yourself as one of the enemy's favorite tactics is to confuse you with lies that are founded and grounded in some truth. And that's what makes this narcissist so dangerous. They know enough of God's truth to twist it. Contradiction number five, they say one thing, but do another. The Christian covert narcissist gives hypocrite a new name. And I hate to imagine how many people they've turned off to Christ with their two-sided tongues. 
They'll tell you how much they want a healthy relationship with you, but then do nothing to contribute to it. They'll make up rules for you to follow, but then not apply them to themselves. And if you call them out, they will offer every excuse in the book until one of them sticks or you're sufficiently exhausted. They are not about growing real relationships. They're about surrounding themselves with people who please them. Contradiction number six. They got the words, but they ain't got the music. Did you ever hear someone sing off key? <laughs> they're singing all the right words at the top of their lungs, but they're completely tone deaf. It's painful. That's the Christian covert narcissist. But even if you're not vocally gifted, you know when you hear bad singing. And it's not as clear though with the Christian covert narcissist. You see, they may be saying all the positive words, but then there's this undercurrent of victimhood. They may be saying encouraging things, but you can almost feel the envy within them. I heard a woman once say, I, I feel like I have to put myself down to help her like me. You see, they've got the words, but they expect you to provide the music. Contradiction number seven, appears grateful, but secretly abusive. These wolves in sheep's clothing will not hesitate to take advantage of you when the need arises. They'll pretend to be grateful with words like, oh, I'm so blessed and oh, thank you so much. But the truth is, once that opportunity is opened up, they truly believe that they are entitled to whatever they are taking from you. And that's why they are always on the hunt for nice people. Contradiction number eight, act like givers, but live like takers. The Christian covert narcissist will put on a performance of a lifetime, convincing you that they are selfless and giving. Many even migrate towards helping professions, but even their chosen profession is designed to bolster their fragile ego. The truth is they don't actually care about people. And professions like caretakers and social workers and even administrative supporters often make these insecure people feel powerful and important. And spend enough time with this person and you'll definitely begin to see their selfish side emerge as it's always just simmering beneath the surface. Because life is all about them. And they may call themselves Christians, but the life of a Christian is one of submission and servitude. Challenge this narcissist and you'll only give them ammunition to improve their game for the next unsuspecting soul. Christian covert narcissists are like chameleons and they fool a lot of people. Don't let that be you. While you may have some adjustments to make in how you deal with this person, I want to encourage you to stop allowing others to label you as the problem when you detect the problem in them. Stay close to God and be patient because my friend, the truth always reveals itself. So remember Matthew 7, 16, when you find yourself confused by the contradicting characteristics of the covert Christian narcissist, you'll know them by their fruit. And if you've ever wondered how a narcissist interprets what you say, go ahead and check out this episode right here. And if you are ready to set boundaries with the narcissist in your life, I want to invite you to check out my online course called Boundaries with Toxic Family. I'll go ahead and include a link in the description section below. And while you're down there, be sure to grab a copy of my free Toxic People Survival Guide. It's my gift to you.